Hi, welcome to Mickle Repair. I used to make adapters for Pylon Tech batteries that are used for solar installations because between the old US 2000 model and the US 2000C and then later the 3000 5000s they changed the pin out of the inverter communication cable and that made it difficult to upgrade sometimes. Most batteries and inverters actually use a CAN bus adapter, but some use an RS-485. And I used to make adapters for both, and these were built using PCBs, custom cases, automated testing. But the demand has dropped, so it no longer makes sense. Instead, I'm gonna show you how to make your own using readily available parts, and I'll even give you the part numbers. This method also applies to other manufacturers. You just need to look up the pinouts in the inverter and battery manuals. The Cat5 patch cable you can see is the battery end, and I'm going to chop off the end of it and punch the wires into the right pins in the adapter. The socket in the adapter is where the inverter then plugs in. It is both colour coded and numbered. Now there's a bit of a weird thing with number one and three here, which is that they seem to have multiple colour codes. And that's because there are actually two versions of the cable. We're almost certainly going to be using a 568B colour coding, but we can just take a little peer in the end of our cable to see what colours are which. So on a 568B, we're expecting pin one to be white and orange, whereas on a 568A, it will be white and green. So if we peer at this, we can see that we have a white and orange followed by an orange. Whereas on a 568A, we would have a white and green followed by a green. Now you're not gonna mix up the sides because it's brown at the other end. You can just see the brown in the end there. There's a white and orange, then an orange. So they are quite hard to see. But if you've got a continuity meter, or an ohm meter, then you're going to be able to double check anyway. So what we're going to do is we are going to punch down into the right numbered holes here. But we have to do a conversion because obviously we're making an adapter. So what wires are we going to use? We're going to use wire 4, wire 5 and wire 6. All the rest we're not going to connect up at all. So we start off, we just cut the end off and now we're just going to trim back a bit of wire. Now, if you're doing this with a real ethernet connection, you're going to want to keep these really, really short and you want to maintain the twists and all that sort of stuff. We actually are working at a very low speed. We don't need to worry quite so much about that. What we do want to worry about is making sure we put this on first, because otherwise you can't put it on after. So cut back. And what we'll do, I think, is just double check and make sure that pin one is indeed white and orange. So we see that they are in twisted pairs, so they'll be green and green and white and so on. Pin one should be white and orange, so I'm just going to whip off a teensy bit of the insulation on the end of that. Not a lot. We don't actually need to strip insulation generally on these. So let's just make sure I'm in an audible setting. That's absolutely fine. And we'll place it on pin one. And pin one, as you look at it from this direction, is on the left. So that is with the tab downwards. So we're definitely orange and white. So this is a 568B. With modern cables, you're unlikely truthfully to find one wired as a 568A. So I said I need number four, number five. So number four is blue and white or a solid blue. If we look in the end of this, we'll see that number four is colored solid blue. Be careful with these because they're not in sequential order. We take our tool now you can get a cheaper tool than this, in which case you'll have to trim off all the edges yourself. This contains both a punch down and a trimmer. Put it on pin four, which is that one there. We'll place this on top. Make sure that our wire is correctly positioned. Push down and there it is, it's connected. So let's have a look now what I need. So now I need pin five. So pin five is white and blue, which is this one here. And I'm gonna connect it to pin five, which is this bottom one here with the white and blue stripe on it. So place this in the right place, push it down, and there you go. And just check, if you look at the end, you should see the wire pressed all the way down to the bottom. Now the next thing I need is pin six on the wire, because the wire is connecting to the battery. So pin six on the wire, which is green and white, so that's gonna be a plain green. So green and white or green. Now all the rest can go. So I'm gonna just chop those off so I don't get confused and the white and green can go as well, so I'm just left with the green. Now, that is pin six on the plug, but I want to join it to pin three, pin two, sorry. So again, I'll just get my 
and a little tool positioned, pop it in, and we're done. And we should see three little things pushed all the way down there. So we've got two, four, and five connected up, but they should be connected up to four, five, and six on this end. We can, of course, just check that with our multimeter. Three, four. That's great. And then five. Looking good. And then six. Great. And that's really all you need to do is just do that final double check. You probably really do want a multimeter to do that. So we need to now just restrain this. And we just use a cable tie for that in this particular model. Some others may have a screw down. Bring this in. And make sure it's well seated. Push your cable in just a little bit. Tighten this up. Yeah, you use a pair of pliers or something like that just to cinch it up that last little bit. If you attach it to the pliers and roll the pliers back, and we just snip that end off. Now I'm going to actually plug this into my automated tester now and uh, just actually fully test it because I've got that facility but your multimeter test should be enough and of course the other test you can do with your multimeter on this end is just to make sure that you've got no shorts anywhere. So when you're testing you start in the end with that one and then test each pin and you move this one along one and then you start at the next pin and just test it because you've already tested that end pair so you don't need to test them again. And if you really, really want to double check to make sure you've got all your pin out correctly, then put a cable in that end and do the wiring test that way. I'm very confident in this, so I'm going to put the lid on. And there we go. Looks very nice. So there we go, that's actually finished. What I'm going to do now is just put it on the tester. Computer up and running with the software. Um, I've run the test on the fixture just to make sure that the fixture is communicating correctly. So we just pick out the test that I want. So there you go, this is the test the US2000B to 2000C adapter and cable. So I'll just connect one end up here and the other end up here. That's my adapter in the middle. And click the test device button. Connect adapter, port OBE, etc. And here we go. Starting to clock up the Hopefully, the whole set of passes. So, through connections, end-to-end -end mapping, correctly passed, all eight passed. Now it's testing it for short circuits. And these are looking good. No short circuits detected so far, at least. And we've got a full pass. Excellent. So, all is well with this adapter. So, anyway, hopefully demonstrating how to make one of these adapters for yourself will be useful. If it is, of course, don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to tell your friends. See you next time. Bye for now.